So this video is going to be a little different. I went on my community tab and I asked you guys what you wanted to know about my time in Georgia because I wanted to make a little recap video about that state and then maybe I can make a recap video about every state I pass through on the AT. But we're just going to start with this video for now because I think it's exciting. I completed my first state on the Appalachian Trail and I have some things I want to say about it. So first, a couple stats about the Georgia section. It is 78 miles, but then 85 miles if you count me doing the approach trail. And I finished all that in just over five days. So it was a lot of work. My biggest day was 22 miles, and that was in northern Georgia. And then I believe my smallest day was day two, and that was 13.1 miles. I keep having to start and stop this video because I keep going into the notes section on my phone, so don't mind that. The first topic is my most memorable moment from Georgia. And for me, I think the most memorable moment is setting up my tent at the end of day one. And it was just a really cool feeling being like back on the Appalachian Trail, like having all my gear, setting up my tent and just getting in my tent and just having the peace and quiet and just kind of like calmness of the Appalachian Trail. Uh, because I think a, a big reason why I do the AT is to just kind of like let go of my stress and not have worries from the outside world. So I just laying there at the end of night one in my tent um, just felt really at peace and I was just really happy. So I think that was my most memorable moment. Next is the most challenging part of Georgia. Um, Georgia is a lot of up and downs, um, but there wasn't one part of the trail that stuck out as really difficult because um, there's just a lot of climbing and it's it's very straightforward climbing. It's not technical at all like some of New Hampshire is, but I guess a couple things that stick out to me is Kelly's Knob, um, the climb out of Hesnity Gap, um, maybe Blood Mountain. Um, if anything, it's just kind of like a longer climb, but I wouldn't say it's challenging. Um, but yeah, those are a couple of the climbs that come to mind. Someone asked for the best day hike recommendation. If someone came out to Georgia and they wanted to spend one day on the AT, what would I recommend? Um, it's probably very cliche, but Blood Mountain is pretty cool. Uh, you can start your hike at... Neil Gap and you get to experience uh, mountain crossings, which is a really cool store and a really cool spot where a lot of hikers, AT through hikers gather. Um, so that's really fun. And then it's not a quick climb, it's, it's pretty uphill, but just a little day hike to Blood Mountain. Uh, if you get it on a good day like I did, you could see Atlanta. Um, and there's a lot of different spots and lookouts for you to hang out and maybe have a lunch up there. So I would recommend that as a day hike. I went through that spot on a weekend and there were so many day hikers. So I think that's a good idea. And the next one kind of goes hand in hand with that. It's the best view of Georgia. And for me personally, it was from the top of Blood Mountain. Uh, there were some days in Georgia that I didn't get views just because of the weather, but I hit Blood Mountain on a really beautiful day. And like another hiker pointed out, you could see the skyline skyline of Atlanta. And I guess that's not that common. It has to be a super clear day to make that possible. So the fact that I got to see that um, just made the view a hundred times better. Real quick, I want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Element. I think. It's super fitting and I'm really glad they're supporting my channel and sponsoring some of my content. Um, I've been using Element on my through hike all the time to keep me super hydrated. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that comes in these individual single serving packets that you can just pour into a bottle of water and it's got really good ingredients to keep you hydrated. 
It has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. And that's like a science-backed formula for the best hydration. I'm out here hiking like 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day sometimes and I sweat a lot so I gotta like replace that sodium and Element has been doing a really good job at helping me do that. I have been really impressed um, with how well I've been able to handle these miles and I think Element is helping. I'm not getting headaches from being dehydrated, I'm not getting muscle cramps from de being dehydrated and I'm just overall really happy with um, how I've been able to handle the hydration on the trail and that's thanks to Element. So if you wanna use my special link, which I'll put on the screen and also in the description, you can get a free sample pack with any purchase on their website. So that's drinkelement.com slash nahampshire, drinklmnt.com slash nahampshire. The sample pack has eight really fun flavors for you to try, and I really recommend it. So if you want to be hydrated on your long hikes, just like me, go ahead and check them out. So thanks Element for sponsoring this video. Now we're talking about the best meal that I had in Georgia. And I think my best meal is actually Sloppy Joe's that I had at your Home in the Woods hostel. Uh, Bonnie and Paul are the couple that own that hostel, or I think it's a BnB and b instead, actually. Um, and it was just such a great experience. They picked me up from trail. They made me a home-cooked dinner of the Sloppy Joes. There was like corn, there was all of these different sides, and it was just so, so good. Um, and then they also made a really good breakfast, too. That was one of my favorite meals in Georgia as well, so... I think the meals at that B&B &B were just spectacular. So those really stuck out to me. Also, they asked about the best sleep on trail in Georgia, which I thought was an interesting question. But hands down, the best sleep I had was at Hostel Around the Bend. Um, I had a room all to myself, super dark, blackout curtains. I did not wake up once. So I was totally rested after that one. <laughs> Now the best connection that I've had um, with other people on the trail took me a second to think about because in Georgia, I didn't meet many hikers, honestly. Um, and everyone that I did meet, I only met once because uh, I think I started doing big miles right off the bat. So I wasn't doing the same pace as a lot of the other hikers that were around me. So it was kind of hard to build connections around that. So what I'm gonna say is my best connection with other hikers in Georgia is actually the hostel owners. Um, because this is my second time around and I stayed at some of the same hostels, I've gotten to know the owners of the hostels and it was really nice to visit them again and just hang out and I don't know, chat and they, they were the ones that I, I see the most. So Gordon and Lisa from Hostel Around the Bend, Lucky from Above the Clouds, and then Bonnie and Paul I met for the first time at their b, &B. Um, I really enjoyed hanging out with them. So best connection goes to the hostel owners for that one. <laughs> Next, I'll talk about any gear changes that I had during the hike in Georgia. And the only thing that I can think of that has changed with my gear is that I bought two tent stakes at Mountain Crossings, so I was actually short one tent stake. I didn't check before I sent all my gear to Georgia, so that's my bad. Um, and then one tent stake was totally just like bent, and I thought it was going to snap at any moment. So I bought two tent stakes, and I think that's all I really had to change or add to my gear list. So all my gear worked very well. The most enjoyable section for me in Georgia might come to a surprise, um, but it's the day that I had after Hog Pen Gap. And the weather wasn't good during this section, but that's okay. What I liked about this section is that it was just, I don't want to say flat because none of the AT is actually like that flat, but it 
didn't have any challenging uphills or downhills and it was just very cruisy. Um, I like when I can hike at a faster pace and I really was able to do that during that section. Um, I'm not one that really craves great views at the top of mountains. I, I just crave like crushing it <laughs> and that sounds so bad but like I just I get my enjoyment from doing these big mile days and from hiking fast and I was feeling good during that section because I was able to do that <laughs> and now I'll just give like an overall update about the bubble in Georgia because I started the trail March 9th which is probably like where most around the time that most hikers are starting the trail um, it might be a little bit on the earlier side, but I, th I think it is the bubble. Um, and from talking to other hikers, I think like there's not as many people on the trail this year as there has been in the past. Um, there are some days where I only pass like a handful of hikers. Uh, I do see a lot of hikers in towns, um, at hostels, at hotels, or wherever I am, um, because... As you probably saw in some of the videos, some of the first hostels I called were already completely booked and they're hostels that fit 20 plus hikers. So hikers are out there. Um, they're in the hostels. I just, me personally, I haven't seen them on trail while I'm hiking. So that's my experience with the bubble. Um, it hasn't been bad. I still have been getting a lot of just like solitude and hiking by myself, but yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. And I think just overall, I think numbers are down on the trail. There's still a bunch of people. Like I was through hiker number 932 to start. So you got to say there's like 900 people in front of me, but it just, it doesn't seem like that at all. I want to include how I'm feeling mentally and physically for this first stay on trail. Mentally, I feel great. I remember when I first started the approach trail on day one, I had a moment in time where I remember saying out loud, like, why am I doing this again? Like, I don't have to do this again. I already did this. It was just a moment of panic. But I think after that moment, I was fine. Um, I didn't get sad on trail. The only time I was upset and cried <laughs> uh, was when I shared a room at a B&B with someone who snored. So... That was the only part of Georgia that made me feel sad. <laughs> but other than that, I felt great mentally. Physically, you probably saw leading up to the trail, I was very concerned about a knee injury. And it does still feel injured, but not when I'm hiking, which is great. Like I'm sitting on the bed right now and I would love to sit like cross-legged and I can, but it's painful. <laughs> and um, my knee can't really handle that, but if I'm moving and I'm hiking, I'm fine. Sometimes the downhills, I can feel it a little bit, especially if I'm moving fast. A couple times on trail, I try jogging and I can feel it then, but I am, I'm really impressed with how it's held up and everything else physically has held up, um, and done a lot better than I thought. I am getting like stiff in my feet. Uh, in the mornings and that's not something I dealt with on trail last time until the second half so it did surprise me a little bit that it started happening really early in the hike but again it's something that's not really impacting my hiking it just the first couple steps of the day or the first couple steps after a break it just gets a little I have to get used to it and stretch it out for a second and then it's back to normal I think the only really soreness I'm feeling is in my hips, which is new, but that's been fine. I've been stretching them out when I can, and physically, I'm doing great. <laughs> that's going to do it for the Georgia recap video. If there's anything you want me to include in future videos where I go over the different states on trail, definitely let me know. I love the stats. I like telling you guys, like, how many miles a state is and like my daily average or like zero days and stuff like that. So get specific with the questions and I'll definitely include them when I talk about North Carolina. So 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.